BTEC Applied Science Unit 1 Physics and this video is about stationary waves. Uh, stationary waves on strings like on a guitar string, uh, transverse stationary waves. There is another kind of stationary wave which are longitudinal ones but we'll worry about them later. This video is about stationary waves on strings such as a, a guitar string. Now, this isn't a stationary wave, this is a progressive wave. So far, the waves that we've looked at, like water waves and the electromagnetic waves, they've been progressive. They travel from one place to another, just normal, ordinary waves. Now, when we pluck a guitar string, we get another type of wave. We get a stationary wave because it doesn't go anywhere. This wave stays on the string and the string vibrates. It's called a, a stationary wave. Okay, What happens is that waves travel up and down the length of the string and they reflect when they get to the ends of the string and then you've got waves interfering with each other. You've got waves interfering with their own reflection and we get constructive interference and we get a stationary wave. Now, the lowest frequency that we get is called the first harmonic or the uh, the fundamental frequency and basically that the string goes up and down like this and it's supposed to be doing it a bit faster but my computer's struggling a bit but this is called the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic and it's a single loop and notice that the the string is moving up and down and if my computer struggled with that one it's going to enjoy this next slide okay now we've got the the first harmonic which is a single loop uh, below that you can see we've got the second harmonic which is two loops and then the third harmonic which is three loops and then the fourth harmonic which is four loops okay and these are my stationary wave patterns this is the special kind of wave that we get on the guitar string okay now each loop is half a wavelength remember that each loop is half a wavelength so for the first harmonic it's just one loop so the length of the string is half a wavelength l equals lambda over two for the first harmonic. For the second harmonic, we have two loops. So the length of the string is two halves of a wavelength. So in other words, it's a wavelength. So the length of the string is a wavelength, etc., etc. For the third harmonic, we've got three loops. So the length of the string is one and a half wavelengths. For the fourth harmonic, we've got four loops. So the length of the string is two wavelengths. Okay. Uh, a few more points about these standing waves we should know. In some places the amplitude is zero and these points are called nodes and we label them with a capital N and in some places the, the amplitude is a maximum, it's greatest and these are called antinodes and we label them with an A. So uh, from node to node is half a wavelength because that's one loop. From node to node is half a wavelength. The distance between two adjacent nodes is half a wavelength. Now, what happens when we pluck the string of a stringed instrument, like a guitar, is that we actually get all of these harmonics happening together at the same time. So instead of getting a simple, smooth sine wave, we get something which is a little bit more complicated, but hopefully sounds quite nice. Uh, each instrument has its own tone because we get a different mixture of harmonics when we pluck it or bow it or whatever. Okay, so when we add together all the harmonics, this is the sound that we actually get from the guitar. Now, the string oscillates at a certain frequency. Okay, and we can work out the, the fundamental frequency. We know that the wavelength is twice the length of the string because the length is half a wavelength so the wavelength is twice the length of the string. We have this equation that we we saw in another video and this is the speed of the wave on the string. 
v equals root t over mu t is the tension mu is the mass per unit length that tells us the speed of the wave on the string now that is all to do with the string the string vibrates at a certain frequency okay and that will produce a sound which has the same frequency uh, the speed of sound in air is about 300 meters per second and we can work out the wavelength of the sound wave using v equals f lambda the wave equation consider this length of the string 0.6 meters mass per unit length tension okay now using those we can work out uh, well first of all we know that the wavelength is 1.2 meters that's the wavelength of the first harmonic on the string is 1.2 meters because it's twice the length of the string we know the velocity of the wave on the string v is root t over mu and work it out for yourself you should get 421 meters per second that's the velocity of the wave on the string then the frequency of the note made by the string f equals v over lambda so 421 divided by 1.2 is 351 hertz so the string is oscillating at 351 hertz so it's going to be making a noise the frequency of the note made by the string is 351 hertz the speed of sound in air is about 300 meters per second so the wavelength of the sound wave lambda is v over f will be about 0.85 meters the guitar string has a natural frequency its fundamental frequency its first harmonic it likes to oscillate at that frequency if you bang a guitar it will oscillate at that frequency at least that string will now when an object is made to oscillate at its natural frequency we get large amplitude oscillations and that's called resonance if you push a kid on the swing at just the right frequency then they'll go higher and higher they will resonate okay remember what's in the box there when an object is made to oscillate at its natural frequency we get large amplitude oscillations this is called resonance now the body of the guitar this big curved wooden thing which is a, an empty box uh, and it's a very special shape because it's designed to have lots of different natural frequencies both the body of the guitar and the air inside it is designed to resonate and that makes the sound a lot louder and it makes it sound a lot nicer or at least on an expensive guitar it does okay so that's an example of resonance resonance can be useful in musical instruments uh, a microwave oven uses resonate uh, resonance because the microwaves make the water molecules resonate they gain energy and your food gets hot uh, tv aerials this is an example that they use in the textbook tv aerials use resonance to get a stronger signal resonance can be a problem uh, for example wind may make buildings and bridges and things oscillate some bridges have collapsed because of resonance skyscrapers may oscillate due to earthquakes uh, bits of machinery may start wobbling violently for example washing machines so sometimes they go go crazy at certain frequencies and they may break so resonance can be useful it can also be a problem